Good evening and welcome to another informative episode of the Skin Therapy Show. I am your host, Sarah Ndanu. As always, we bring for you uh, experts in skincare who are ready to talk everything skin. Today we are at the luxurious Revitalize Wellness Center. So come with me and let's see what we have in store for you. Joining me on set today is Dr. Pancholi. Welcome on set. Thank you. For those who don't know you back at home, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and how long you've been doing this. Okay. I studied dermatology at Harvard Medical School eight years ago, and then came back to Kenya, and now I practice dermatology and cosmetic medicine and cosmetic laser surgery at uh, Yaya Center in Nairobi. You've spoken about laser surgery. Please expound on that and uh, what is that all about? We have a lot of different lasers that we use to treat different conditions in the skin. Uh, a very common treatment that everybody is now getting is laser hair removal. Yeah? So for ladies who have hormonal imbalances and uh, sometimes the hormonal imbalances give rise to a few hairs and a moustache and things yeah, like yeah. that, so for that, um, we do laser hair removal. Mm -hmm. If you're going to the coast over Christmas and you want to get your um, uh, bikini line waxed, now instead you can have it lasered because laser is permanent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So wait, what, are you, what you're trying to say is that when I have laser hair removal, I will never have hair in that particular area? Absolutely. You need between six to ten sessions to complete the treatment okay. and the laser that we have is actually safe on dark skin and that's a very important question you need to ask before doing a laser treatment mm -hmm. but um, after six to ten sessions the hair doesn't grow so even if it's the underarms yeah. because you know ladies when they want to wear something short mm -hmm. the first thing they do is oh yeah I have to wax or I have to shave yeah, yeah? But now, with laser hair removal, which is permanent, you don't have to think about that anymore. Wow, that's amazing. I shall try that. Uh, now, apart from laser hair removal, what other laser surgeries do you have, mm -hmm. do you offer? We offer um, laser treatment for dark spots, laser treatment for melasma. Mm -hmm. We do laser treatment for leg veins. Mm -hmm. We do laser... Stretch marks? Yes, we have a laser treatment oh. for stretch marks as well. And um, everybody gets very interested as soon as I mention laser treatment for stretch yes. marks because most women from the age of 18 onwards do have stretch marks. Yes. And um, what happens is with laser treatment, we are able to reduce the visibility mm -hmm. of the stretch marks by 60 to 90 percent. Uh, stretch marks once formed don't go away completely. Yeah. And uh, we are ma able to make a difference, but the expectations have to be realistic. But we have had some amazing results when it comes to laser treatment with stretch marks. What are the common uh, facial yes. problems that you've handled? Acne is one of the most common problems that we get. Teenagers are prone to acne. However, we have adult acne as well. And um, as I'm sure you, you're aware, even contraception can bring about hormonal imbalances. I've actually dealt with that before. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So when uh, contraception starts causing an imbalance between our estrogen and our testosterone, mm. and we actually, it's like a seesaw, yeah? Both men and women have estrogen and testosterone. And sometimes, for whatever reason, if the contraceptive pill causes a slight increase in our testosterone, mm -hmm. yeah, then if we do a blood test, the, the levels will still come back normal, but it's a very minimal increase. And what this does is this causes the sebaceous glands in the skin that secrete oil to start hypersecreting. Mm -hmm. And when these start hypersecreting, then we get excessive oil. 
Now we have excessive oil. The skin is um, shedding itself as it does every 28 days. Mm. Yeah, and then we have dirt, dust, and sweat from the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now this clogs the pores. So we have a cake, a microscopic cake blocking our pores of sweat, dirt, oil, and dead skin. Mm -hmm. And once this clogs the pores, then the skin can't breathe. Now, the sebaceous glands are still secreting more oil. Yeah. So what happens is the oil gets stuck underneath the skin and it becomes a nice, juicy little cyst, mm. which the bacteria love. Mm -hmm. So then the bacteria come in and they also attack the acne cyst. And that is actually what we... Uh, what we describe as the genesis of acne or the pathophysiology yeah. of acne. How do I know if I use this contraceptive, it will affect mm. my skin in a negative way? Yeah. Is there now, something to... A lot of times, it may be hard to tell mm -hmm. because we're all human beings and we're all very different. Yeah. One's, m one man's meat is it's another a man's poison. poison. Yeah. What may work for you may not work for me, for example. Mm -hmm. But in general, if you're going to take a contraceptive, then you need to discuss it with your gynecologist. However, I would recommend Diane or Yasmin, which are also used for the treatment of acne at the same time. Mm -hmm. All right. We will now take a short commercial break, but when we come back, we'll be talking about treatment and prevention of some of the skin diseases. Do not go so far. Welcome back. You're watching the Skin Therapy Show, the right information that I personally needed to hear from Dr. Pancholi. But how many of you actually know what skin types you are? Before you can start taking care of your skin, you need to know what to do. And that's why right now on the show, I'm joined by Doris Atieno, who's a beauty consultant. She says she does this for a passion, but it will be nice to not preempt what she's going to say, but give her a chance to briefly introduce herself and tell us about what you have been doing, Doris. My name is Doris Atieno, a beauty consultant. I've been doing this for six years now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a long time. I do it as a passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you briefly take us through some of uh, the, the skin types that we've got before you can show us how exactly to know um, this X type of skin? Yeah. We have uh, dry skin, combination skin, and we have oily skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we we go to the shelves or supermarkets, we buy products mm -hmm. to use on our skin, but you don't know if you're dry skin, combination skin, or oily skin. Mm -hmm. So you have to do a skin test mm -hmm. for you to be sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And let me ask, must it be done by a professional or can you do it at home? Because most people were looking for an option that I can easily go with. I do not want something complicated, something costly. I'm looking for something free, quote unquote. Yeah. So is it something that you can do at home and what would that mean? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have machines which can do that. But nowadays with technology, we have strips. You can do it at home. Uh, we have strips such as these ones. Mm -hmm. You carry them in your bag. You can go anywhere at home and do the, do the skin test. And you get, we have result chart. You check your skin type through this. Enough with my talking. It's time to go down to business and get to know what skin types we are. I, I hope I'll be lucky to also get to know what my skin type exactly. is because I don't know. But take us through the demonstration and uh, maybe tell us what you're going to do yes. and how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm going to wipe her. Mm -hmm. I wipe, I wipe uh, her forehead and cheek. This is called a quick and easy skin tester. Mm -hmm. So you just wipe here, uh, the cheek and forehead. I'll take my Let's cotton. That, yeah. If you have makeup, you can use makeup remover. Mm -hmm. If you don't have match makeup, you can just use a damp cotton with mm -hmm. water. Yeah. The, the whole point is to test the skin with nothing on it. Exactly. Okay. For you to get a good result. Okay. Yeah.
I'll wait for it to dry for like a second. Mm -hmm. And then I'll place my strips, uh, one on the forehead, mm -hmm. the green one on the cheek, and the gray one on the forehead. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, they're clear. I'm going to place them now. Okay. They are white for 15 seconds. Are there times when the result for this and the result of that differ and what would cause that to happen? Never. They can't differ. Okay. Yeah. 15 seconds are over now. I should believe so. So as you can see, this one has some on it yes. and this one doesn't have much mm -hmm. yeah so how do you interpret this results mm -hmm. she's combination skin mm -hmm. yeah part of her her cheek is a bit oily it has moisture mm -hmm. and her forehead is a bit dry mm -hmm. yeah so in such a situation what sort of products do you use because i do not know if there are uh, products in the market that come in combination we do have ah, okay. we do have products for combination skin mm -hmm. If you're dry, we do have products for dry skin. Mm -hmm. If you're oily, we do have products for oily skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. From your paper result, yeah. there's a spot, uh, there's a piece of paper that does not have as much spots and there's one that has much. So what is the difference? Okay, the difference, the paper which comes out with, which doesn't have any spots, mm -hmm. that's a dry skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a dry skin. Mm -hmm. But the pa like hers, it has some spots on it. Mm -hmm. Not very much, not a lot, mm -hmm. but it has some dots mm -hmm. on the paper. Mm -hmm. That's combination skin. Mm -hmm. With the oily skin, you can see this all over the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, maybe you can quickly remind us why it is important to get to know your skin type. And if you have any final thoughts, give us as well. Yes, it is very important to do a skin test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, you have to know your skin type mm -hmm. before you go out there to pick a product on the, on the shelf mm -hmm. to go and use at home. You have to know your skin type. After that, you'll be able to go out to the shelves. You see if you have a dry skin, you pick a product for dry skin mm -hmm. or someone can recommend mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Whoever who is doing the skin test will recommend mm -hmm. which products you can use and mm -hmm. which one. Mm -hmm. You can choose. Mm -hmm. yes. I must say you have very beautiful skin yourself. <laughs> when you. I grow up, I want my skin to look <laughs> like hers. But anyways, what SQs have you got now not to take care of your skin? It's very easy. 15 seconds and you get to know how best to take care of your skin. This is a skin therapy show. Do stay with us. Welcome back to the Skin Therapy Show. I'm your host, Sarah Dino, and I'm here with Dr. Pancholi. Now, Pancholi... Let's talk about how diet affects our skin. Diet plays a very important role with our skin. Uh, you want to have foods rich in antioxidants and vitamins. Carrot juice is quite good, blueberries, blackberries. You want to have uh, olive oil in, in your food. Um, tuna fish is good. Green tea is quite good. You want to have at least two to three liters of water a day and you want to avoid oily fatty foods and trans saturated fats. Dr. Pancholi, you've talked about um, using olive oil and tuna and someone watching is thinking this is very expensive for me. Are there any cheaper methods to maintain a flawless skin? Now fish in general is quite good because it has high contents of omega, which are good for the skin. The other home remedy that I would like to recommend is you take some honey, sprinkle a little bit of sugar in it, and then squeeze a lemon, mix it up, and then use it as a facial scrub twice a week. What this will do is this will help clear up the complexion, and vitamin C from the lemon has been known to give a nice glow to the face. Okay. Dr. Pancholi, when I came to your clinic a few months ago, you used the chemical pill to cure my acne. 
Uh, tell us more about the chemical peel, how many types we have and other treatments for acne. If I recall correctly, we did a fruit peel on you, yes. which is uh, glycolic acid, uh, which is made out of sugar cane. There's different kinds of chemical peels that we use. We have the alpha hydroxy acids, we have the beta hydroxy acids, mm -hmm. and we have the polyhydroxy acids. Now, basically what happens is, with all these different peels, we want to peel off up to a certain extent of the skin. So we have the superficial peels that we'll use for fine lines and mild acne. We have the medium strength peels that we'll use for pigmentation and um, cystic acne. And then we have the deep peels that we use mainly for anti-aging. Now the way a chemical peel works is it's applied superficially on top of the skin and once applied it's left on for a certain amount of time and then what happens is after two to three days you notice that your skin starts peeling and you can actually yeah. peel off the top layer of the skin yeah. and when the skin comes out then it allows fresh and healthy skin to grow from underneath and when the top layer of skin comes out it comes out with all those blocked pores and the clogged uh, dead cells and everything that we had talked about mm -hmm. so all this comes out and you get a new vibrant skin coming out and um, you actually feel younger absolutely yeah. absolutely and somebody was asking me Daktari if I peel off all my skin won't there be a time when I won't be left with any skin mm. And the answer to that is chemical peels actually cause stimulation of collagen. Mm -hmm. So they cause fresh and healthy skin to actually grow. So you're stimulating skin. So there's no way you'll peel off all your skin. Yeah. So it's, it's not something to be worried about. Okay. Is there a particular age when you're meant to start using the chemical peel? And how many times can you do this in a year? Mm, I have some patients that come for a monthly chemical peel. Oh. Yeah, it, it's, it helps with anti-aging, it gives you a good glow okay. and um, it keeps your fine lines and wrinkles at bay and it helps reduce pigmentation. Why wouldn't you do it? How many sessions for you to have uh, results? Between three to five sessions in general okay. and uh, you're normally okay. I will now be reading some of your questions that you have uh, sent on Twitter. Dr. Pancholi, someone is asking, Hi, Dr. Pancholi, uh, you're very inspiring. Thank you so much. Um, I suffer from pigmentation. How can I, um, how can I be treated for this? And someone else is saying, Hi, Dr. Pancholi, I'm a mother of two and my kids are suffering from eczema. What are the best um, measures and treatments I can, I can go for? And do you offer that in your clinic? Pigmentation is a very common problem in uh, African skin. Mm -hmm. And there's different kinds of pigmentation. So I would need to see the skin to be able to assess it. Sometimes we have pigmentation after acne. So basically once we get the breakouts, then the spots go away, but they, they leave behind dark patches. The other kind of pigmentation that is quite common in dark skin is something known as melasma. And melasma is due to a hormonal imbalance. There's two different kinds of melasma. We have the epidermal melasma, which is the top layer of skin, and we have the dermal melasma. Some, form of, some forms of melasma are easier to treat than others. So I would want to have a look at her, assess her, and then decide on what to do but chemical peels which we talked about would be a good option as would laser treatment okay. and sometimes we can even do glutathione therapy which is uh, skin brightening injections. All right somebody is talking about uh, using anti-aging creams. Hi Dr. Pancholi my name is uh, Ruth. Uh, uh, when should I start using anti-aging creams? I would recommend that you start off after the age of 30 using anti-aging creams and what these are going to do is they're going to prevent the skin from getting fine lines and wrinkles. Mm -hmm. However, in some cases it's all dependent on somebody's skin type mm -hmm. and some people may need to start a little bit earlier than others, some people may need to start a little bit later than others. Mm -hmm. And going back to our Facebook page, Daniel is asking, Dr. Pancholi, I'm a guy, 
Um, would you advise me to use Botox? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. there's this notion that Botox is only for women. No, 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 no. In fact, I personally do Botox and dermal fillers. I get it done. Yeah. yeah. I have lawyers coming to get Botox done. I have mm. male politicians that come to get Botox done. And uh, there's, there's so many men out there that are doing it. Mm. Yeah. And it's about looking good. Mm. It's about feeling good. Mm. And sometimes when you look in the mirror and you see these lines, and you see now your cheeks have dropped and you're like, why should we have to live like that? Yeah. yeah? What are the side effects? Okay. Now, all medical procedures have side effects and all medical drugs have side effects and even Panadol can give you liver failure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So basically all treatments will have side effects but when done correctly in the right hands by a professionally qualified person then you're not going to be worried about side effects. Okay. Kevin wants to know where your clinic is at. Uh, my clinic is at Yaya Center on the fourth floor, and um, I'm there Do when you, you need specific me. Specific hours? For I'm, I'm normally at Yaya Center in the afternoons. Okay, Dr. Pancholi, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today. Thank you uh, for having me. Yes. Any last words to you know people watching at home? There is a very strange notion amongst Kenyan men mm -hmm. that they feel that they don't need to take care of their skin. Oh, yeah. And um, just as important as it is for ladies, it's just as important for men to take care of their skin. Mm -hmm. And there's different skin regimes that they can use. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things that I would like to emphasize on is the use of sunblock or sun protection. Mm -hmm. You need to use sun protection and an SPF of 30 is essential even on cloudy days. So sunblock or sun protection needs, needs to be used even when you're indoors. And uh, basically what happens is we have UV rays that are coming through the glass and affecting our skin, causing photo damage. They create free radicals that then make the aging process much faster. And I'm sure you've noticed that when you get into a car, yeah, then you feel the heat even more sometimes than the outside. And this is because of the effect of the UV rays and they're causing a thermogenic effect, the same way they have a photo-damaging effect on the skin. Great. That is very important because I didn't know about that. I only use the sunscreen when I'm you know, going to the beach, so yeah. very good of yeah, you yeah. to mention that. All right, thank you very much for being with us today. We hope that you'll be back. We know you're at the Jack of All Trades. You are also a cosmetic surgeon, so we hope we'll have another episode where we'll talk about bleaching and you know cosmetic surgery and uh, the side effects absolutely All right? it'll be a pleasure okay thank you very much and thank you for joining us today uh, on this week's episode of the skin therapy show we hope that you enjoyed yourself please do not forget to uh, get in touch with us on our social media pages that is facebook instagram and twitter let us see and know what you're going through so that we can offer uh, the best solutions to your skin problems until next time it's been a pleasure having you my name is sarandanu see you same time same place next week <music>